Hi, John Blicky here again. Uh, this is video number two uh, for learning web design, uh, discussing it. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is um, I'm going to demonstrate the three different technologies, languages, XHTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and display them in an effective manner so um, the folks that aren't um, as savvy as they'd like to be and don't understand these languages and what they're supposed to be, what their roles are, what they're supposed to do. Um, before we even start um, learning them, uh, it would be nice to see effective examples uh, specifically of what they do. So, we're going to take the camera here and I'm going to uh, explain, I'm going to show you on my own website in a moment both the old and the new versions and uh, give you some pretty clear cut examples of how we use them. Now I'm going to explain them um, XHTML. Now we want to think of a well written website as a newspaper. You have paragraphs, headers, and uh, images on uh, a newspaper and you have the same thing on a, um, a website, well, a well-crafted website. So anyway, um, XHTML are merely, you want to think of it as a, a noun uh, language. Well, some people say syntax and markup and all that, but we're just going to keep it nice and simple right now. Uh, so XHTML, noun. CSS, cascading style sheets, uh, adjectives. And JavaScript, function. Um, so more of the advanced stuff. Now you can make like things that appear to function like menus and stuff on their own without any JavaScript with CSS but that's really advanced and that's not really the point of CSS. So anyway, um, a page with XHTML code um, will be styled by default be like a white page of black text essentially. Um, the headers would be sized differently than the paragraphs and all that. It would be basically styled without CSS by the browser. When you add your own CSS, you start styling the, H the XHTML. Uh, we're not going to go into any heavy layouts or anything like that. And the JavaScript, we'll see examples of that in just a moment. So anyway, let me give you a, a nice little viewpoint here of what I'm looking at. And we're going to start off with my old website. Here. Okay, so here's um, the old version of my website. It's almost two years old. And uh, there we go. Alright, so um, CSS. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you um, the power of CSS. Um, CSS is included in a single file. Um, and so um, if you switch the file, you can change all the styling. Uh, so, let's see an example here. And another example. All right, I'm not graphically talented. And this one is the test one I never finished. And let's go to um, a newer version of my site. And I did this one for my friend Andrew. And all I'm doing... Oops. All that is, is I'm taking one CSS file and swapping it with another. Um, that's it. And there are there other um, languages involved, and the, and the method I, I do it is, it's modestly difficult, but anyway, don't worry about that part. You, it's just an example of the power and flexibility of CSS, whereas in the old school HTML, you would define all the adjective-like aspects of your page, the color, the size, and all that, in the XHTML itself. Because it's in the H HTML, you can't swap it out. And even if you had CSS, it would be overridden. Its rules, in effect, would be overridden by something that's more specific. So anyway, 
So when I'm going to teach XHTML, we're going to just learn XHTML, not non-XHTML stuff that will be handled by CSS. CSS will handle all the styling, and JavaScript will handle more of the functions. Now, um, I'm going to show you what the page would look like, for example, if we disabled all the style sheets. So, um, make sure we got the uh, page on here. Okay, got to love the uh, webcam, but hey, it compresses the video a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to disable the style sheet so there's no CSS. Alright, this is XHTML without any styling. And um, if uh, you know exactly what you're looking at, basically your co my content, the header one, is right there at the very top. Now, um, most websites uh, don't take this into effect. Most websites, they, uh, uh, well, we'll get into that later. But um, so effectively, um, CSS does all that styling. So when I turned it off, everything lost its styling and what you saw the black and white, uh, the white page, the black text and the blue links, that's how the browser will style it by default. Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn that back on and then I'm going to show you um, an example of JavaScript. Well, some examples. I'm going to go into some advanced examples. So, um, here we are again. This would stay on there. All right. Um, now, when I open this, that's JavaScript right there, because CSS can't do that. Now, um, for example, when I do these menus, that is pure CSS. You're wondering, well, how is that different? Well, I'm I'm not going to go deep into it, but I am going to disable all the JavaScript. And I'm going to reload this page. Okay. And I'm going to roll over these menus again. And they work without JavaScript. But if I try to open these menus, nothing's going to happen because the JavaScript is disabled. Um, uh, those functions es essentially do control uh, a different script that will um, change the styling in its own way but it also um, does some other stuff in the background so anyway um, and if you watched the first video and you saw how I was dragging this I'll g give you another uh, quick look here this is going to be even more much more advanced than what I was showing you uh, drag that down here um, if I open this up now and I drag it around, that is called DHTML, Dynamic Hypertext Market Language, uh -huh. which is essentially JavaScript controlling HTML. But because we have CSS in the mix, the CSS is defining the styling, the JavaScript is working in combination with that and all that fun jazz. Um, I want to show you how you can implement that eventually without writing the actual library for it, because there are actually libraries that are already pre-compiled that you can just start writing very minimal JavaScript for. Um, and uh, we're going to give uh, the people who do those things a lot of credit because um, they make the rest of our lives easier, just like I'm trying to make uh, your lives easier by teaching you this stuff. So anyway, um, that, I hope, gives you a clear idea of what the roles of XHTML, CSS, and JavaScript should be on their own, how they should be used to try to intermingle on each other's territory because they don't exactly, they're built for specific reasons. Um, I guess in the next video, um, we'll, we'll find out. I think, Sam, I'm going to let you uh, choose what we do in the next video. How's that? Alright, see you in video number three. Thanks for watching.